Chinese opposition to the league is mounting. The English version of the Chinese Daily newspaper publishing this cartoon today titled Wrong Move with the word politics tagged in Mandarin in the bomb in this altered NBA logo. Let's get more on this growing backlash from a former NBA all-star. Joining us now is Jamal Mashburn. Jamal, it's great to have you here at Fast Money. Thank Welcome. You. Thanks for having me. Um, what's your take on, on all of this? Uh, well, I, when I played in the NBA, I played under David Stern and obviously knew Adam Silver when he, uh, he took over. Known Adam Silver since he was NBA Entertainment. Uh, I think they're in a, a little bit of a pickle. One thing about the NBA is that uh, they're usually at the forefront of social issues, but I don't think they were anticipating this one. This caught them out of left field a little bit. There's a lot of money involved. There's a lot of politics involved. But I think Adam Silver is the best way, best person to handle it. And I think the players are a little bit of a quandary, too, because some of them have marketing deals over there with some of the Chinese shoe companies. So it'll be interesting in how this all shakes out, not just from an NBA standpoint, but from a political landscape. Right. The most recent sort of political controversy in the world of sports was the kneeling controversy. And that was really something that was that was generated and kept up by the player. So mm -hmm. it's sort of a different circumstance to have the GM of the Rockets start this whole thing. Do you think the players these days, I mean, you mentioned all the marketing relationships. Yeah. There's obviously life after the NBA that right. all players these days think about. Are they savvier now? Are they savvy enough to know that there are huge ramifications for, for tweeting on political issues? Well, I think you've seen a lot of players not engage in the conversation yeah. as of late. So they understand the economics of it. And they understand the business of it. And they don't want to hurt their brand. Um, so they're being very careful about what they say and how they position themselves. And listen, they really understand that there's a huge market in China for basketball fans. And at the end of the day, you're going to have to go through China, India, who's an emerging market, and also Africa as well. But um, players are much more savvy. I think you'll see a lot of guys a little bit more silent until they really understand the issue and get a little bit of a direction from Adam Silver mm -hmm. on which way to proceed. Some have said the NBA is different from a publicly traded company, Correct. like a Starbucks, et cetera, um, and that the NBA doesn't necessarily have to grow. It doesn't have to go into China. It can forego that 10 percent of revenues it currently gets in China. What's your view? I mean, do you think, I mean, as a former player, do you think we need to go to this new fan base, this new and growing fan base, in order to stay relevant? Uh, I think in order to, you still have to grow your customer base. And at the end of the day, the NBA, in my opinion, and I've had conversations with a lot of higher ups, they're a marketing company, essentially. I mean, uh, and just happen to be in the brand of basketball. So they have to grow their particular fan base and viewership and with streaming and the access to content. And live basketball or recorded basketball is probably some of the best content there to do in in game advertising. So there's benefits on both sides. And I, I think the the NBA is in a, in a tough situation. It'll be interesting. I don't want to be in Adam Silver's position right now. You know what I mean? Uh, he's he's going to earn his money on this one. And he's the right guy to do it, Jamal. But let's, is there a player or a group of players? And this is very complicated, as you said, that the rest of the league will take their cue from. In other words, if LeBron or Steph Curry comes out and makes a statement, will the rest of the league sort of line up with those guys? I think, well, just like any team sport, you always look at the best player. And sometimes the best player is not the smartest person in the room. Agreed. Um, but I think LeBron James is one of the smartest players in the league, and you cross over from NFL to Major League Baseball. I think another guy that will probably be in the forefront of it is Chris Paul. Chris Paul is the head of the NBA Players Association. He's done a lot of great work in helping out retired players, current players, and also initiating some younger players into the league. So I think those guys, we have to walk hand in step with uh, Adam Silver to really craft the message. Because at the end of the day, I think it's, all, it's bigger than the NBA at the end of the day. It just happens to be the pawn in all this. And they're over there now pitching and peddling their product. So, Devon, let me ask you a tough question. If you were Nike, what Oof. would you do now? Having Ooh. taken political stances in the past, what, what would you do? Um, I would probably be the retired chairman of the board <laughs> at this particular point um, and ride off into the sunset. I mean, it's, a, it's an interesting conversation. I mean, because obviously manufacturing of shoes over there, uh, selling their brand. I mean, I was a part of the uh, select team that initiated the first dream team to international basketball. So I do understand the, uh, the magnification of professional sports, especially the NBA. Um, that that's a tough one. I would probably be more concerned about the brands that are pulling out right now. So it's Antna, the shoe company, uh, their license deal, Tencent, the content provider there. I, I, I would probably be more focused on them and how do you uh, uh, sever those relationships or bring those relationships closer to you um, uh, within a framework that you both can work in. 
the headlines of the day, Jamal, have hijacked this interview to talking about the NBA, but yeah. you're a business guy. You've got <laughs> car dealerships, yeah. you've got interest in restaurant franchises like Papa John's, and your latest investment is in cannabis. Yeah. How did you get into that? Are you using cannabis in any form? What, what got you interested? Well, I would say this. This is a, and I, I hope this comes off correct. This is now my new ESPN, is you guys, watching you guys. So <laughs> I've uh, done a lot of research in the cannabis sector and um, looked at it from the standpoint of medical and also recreational and where states are going. I live in Florida right now. They have it passed medically. Maybe down the road, recre recreationally, it'll be done. Um, I just see it as an emerging business that needs to really figure out how it's going to help minorities participate, uh, people of color and also women participate in the industry, skilled labor or owning licenses or cultivation facilities. And uh, Revolution Global, I chose them because they're the best operators. Great friend of mine who sits on, he's the chairman of the board, Tony Hunter, and the CEO, Mark D'Souza, they're operators by nature. And I've never gotten into a business where I'm an endorser. I've created operating companies to run these businesses. So that's, I'm looking at the fundamentals of business rather than being an endorser or standing next to a product. I can really care less about that. I like the fundamentals and seeing where cannabis is going, how it helps people medically. Mm -hmm. uh, I've experienced it with my mom who went through cancer and she had to use the regular pharmaceuticals. And if she had access to cannabis, maybe her treatment would have been different. Uh, I've seen players when I play, not legal at the time, use cannabis for not recreational, but to help them sleep and anti-inflammatory. So I think there are medical benefits for it. And also it's a business that I think needs to be organized in some sort of way. Sure. Capital is struggling to get into it right now because it's uh -huh. not on the federal level. Um, so there's opportunity there. And uh, Revolution, they, they've allowed me to sit on the board to help them out with their retail since I have great uh, knowledge of that with my Papa John stores. We probably have over 100 stores in 10 different states and along with the car business. So they allow me to... To, to, to play on the operation side, which I love to live at. I think that's a more sustainable business model if you do it correctly. And how, how is the U.S. consumer doing as you read across your businesses like pizza and cars, et cetera? Doing well. I mean, we had a struggle with Papa John's there for a little bit. Everybody knows what the struggle is there, but it's, it's trending up. Comps are, comps are trending up. Uh, car business is doing really well. We sell a lot of trucks. We're in the Detroit and also Kentucky market. Um, so we're in the the middle of America where you can get a better read on the economy. You know, uh, if people are not servicing their cars and they're staying home, I mean, it's the put, close your checkbook a look and stand on the sideline. You know, if people are buying more pizza because it's an accessible product to feed a family of four and pizza sales are going somewhere, that means people are not going out as much. So I kind of read it from that level. And that's why I watch you guys to kind of compare of what I know and I don't know and kind of uh, uh, do my research that way. So. Yeah. To me, things are doing well. Always couldn't be improving. I'm a competitor, so I mean, uh, we can always be efficient. Much. You more invest efficient. in stocks? I have, but you know what? I tend to bet on myself. Okay. That's a good investment. Jamal, pleasure to speak with you. Thank you so much for coming by. Thank you, Jamal Mashburn. Love him. What's not so when I, so you see, I mean, when I'm watching, when the NBA I could watch it, uh -huh. I mean, Mash was a guy. He was a player of the year in the SEC, I think, 93. Yeah. 93, correct. Played in the league for tw probably averaged 20 points a game for your career, yes, ish. Indeed. Yeah, we can go ish. I, and, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right there. 19.1, so I'll round up. Ish. You know, 20 -ish. Yeah. But even better, I mean, he's a really bright, smart, engaged, thoughtful yeah. person. I mean, that's wonderful to see. So good for Jamal, man. And the fact that he watches this show, come on. Makes them even better, huh? 100%. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I, I thought his commentary about what the NBA is doing and how they should proceed is really important. I think it was in a very sober manner. I think mm -hmm. the NBA kind of checked themselves. I think there's a lot of ways that they could have done a lot of damage for the players, for the for the franchise that they didn't do, but also all those other brands that are really tied in. And so him talking about it as a marketing organization, I think it's really important because we think about all these companies in the U.S. that don't have access to China, whether it right. be Facebook or whatever. This is the neg next leg of growth for so many U.S. multinationals and we do have to be careful about it. And cognitive of the fact is 1.2 billion people over there, 500 million who watch basketball. So it's a tricky one, and I think the NBA is doing a good job so far. I think it'll be interesting to see if Nike ever enters I this know. fray. I know. I can see I mean, they what... manufacture there. This right. is a There's growth market so, for them. There's so much at stake. I know. I think nothing at the moment seems okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right.